Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. We apologize. The bishop wasn't quite ready this morning. Got a few things going on. Veteran service people coming in. So I'm kind of running to get this late start. So I'm going to go ahead and read uh, um, the Breakfast for Champions. Amen. Ephesians um, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. And um, we'll read that. And then we'll move forward. After I pray, Father, we just thank you. We honor you. We bless you for your name and your word and just your spirit and your presence. Bless us in today's Bible study. As we continue to uproot those things that would hinder the free flow of your spirit. We love you and we honor you, sir. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, starting with verse 15, it says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of the rich I'm sorry with the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all amen and so uh, we want to just try to remember to read that every morning before we get started it'll help us and kind of keep us refreshed on the uh, uh, the Lord's intention for us to have the power of God operating in our lives. All right, amen. Here we are once again, all 300 here and a uh, thousand uh, by internet. We welcome you uh, today to, to the Bible study here on Thursday, November the 7th, 2013. And we are right in the midst of 52 days of restoration. Amen. And so we have about 14 days left after tonight. And uh, we're excited about that prayer tonight from 6 to 7. And we'll spend about 15 minutes uh, speaking on one of the names of God. And we are in the Jehovahistic names. And so uh, yesterday was Jehovah. And today will be one of the names that is prefixed with Jehovah. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to that. We're excited about um, God speaking to us as his person and his essence and his character through one of the names that was given him. Uh, by the patriarchs so we look forward to that tonight or I mean today this afternoon we're here still dealing with um, anger and uh, developing a trusting attitude and it's amazing that when you overcome anger that's what you develop is a trusting attitude normally angry people are people who don't trust Amen. People who have been hurt. Because remember, anger is when we had selfish desires unfulfilled. When selfish desires are unfulfilled, we become angry. And so we talked about a few things. We talked about um, the, the key scripture. Let's, let's look at the key scripture. Proverbs 16, verse 32. It says to us in the King James, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit... Uh, than he that taketh a city and so we've also for those that are watching uh, we've also looked at those that scripture in the new the living bible uh, the niv and the message bible so look at all of those translations and they help to present a, a better understanding of what that scripture is saying uh, we also talked about anger being the root of murder and war and so we want to remember that that anger is the root 
of murder and war. And so we can't leave this thing undetected. We can't just leave it uh, um, isolated and, and percolating. We talked about that last night a little bit of how we allow things to percolate and eventually boil over or bust out at the wrong times in our lives because it went unchecked. That's why Hebrew writer, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, Hosea the prophet in chapter 10 verse 12, he said that we've got to break up the fallow ground. We've got to go and deal with some areas that are weeding in our lives that we have not weeded in a long time amen because if we leave things rampant in our gardens eventually it'll choke the flowers amen and so we want to be sure that we go in and we de-weed from time to time uh, the, the writing of the book of Corinthian in the second book chapter 13 verse 5 he reminds us to test your own faith and see if it's real see if it's genuine and in the message translation it said and if it's not you need to do something about it we need to we need to make sure that we clean our lives out and so we talked even last night about fasting and how fasting brings power if you're gonna if you're gonna prosper in the year of favor if you're gonna have favor we talked about the number eight thing that you do I told you it's ten things that my bishop gave us that we do in a year of favor number eight was fast for power and we found out all the, the aspects of fasting we talked about what fasting does in our lives and and one of the things that it does is it disconnects us from the heavy influence of both our flesh and our emotion amen fasting brings that influence influence down the, the rate of influence that our flesh and emotions have over our lives fasting allows that to dissipate a little bit and to to be stretched out we just don't we don't move by our emotions and we're not overcome by how we feel uh certain times and so it was good last night i think that we we were able to convey a good message as it relates to fasting because ultimately fasting brings consecration and sanctification which is ultimately to bring someone else out Amen. Our consecration and sanctification is really to be used by God to bring someone else's deliverance. And the reason why we fast is to cleanse ourselves, not just so that we can be more holy, but so that we can be a vessel that won't contaminate the glory as it passes through us. Amen. Because God uses us to deal with one another. It's just simple as that. Uh, most of us that got saved heard the gospel. And the Bible says, how can they hear unless there be a preacher? And how can he preach unless he or she be sent? And so they, but they got to be sent a, a vessel, meat for the master's use. And so that's what that whole process is. And in that fasting, one of the things we talked about that, ha that we have to get rid of is that anger. Anger is one of those things that fasting can affect right away. And so in talking about that, we talked about some practical evidences of um, the root of anger and we talked about temper tantrums and we talked about these spells and throwing fits and losing our mind and raising Cain and we won't go back to that but you could I could probably talk on that forever raising Cain I could probably just stay right there for about six months Lord have mercy can you believe that anger is in that spell that comes over us it's also known as raising Cain and we know that Cain was a murderer you know that he murdered Abel because he was upset at Abel's sacrifice was acceptable to God he his was not and so when we we allow anger to come and we allow that spirit to arise in us man that is dangerous to have to know and to have that definition of that tantrum uh, that is raising Cain or it's going through a spell which then talks about witchcraft and all the things that the witchcraft does to us because you know if we think about it witchcraft and, and all those things cause us to have these outbursts so when we think about a spell being on just think about how many times you got so angry you just started screaming just start acting a fool. Just couldn't even calm yourself down. That's being under a spell. When you get, you're so mad, you're shaking. You're so mad, you're burning and getting hot. That's being under a spell. We open our lives up to demonic influence and oppression because of this tantrum that we throw in at 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80. We still throwing temper tantrums like we did when we was two years old. Amen. But that's because we give the enemy room to put this spell on us. We're supposed to be saved and not possessed by the devil, but we let the oppression of the spell and the oppression of witchcraft overtake us because we done threw a fit. Somebody say, I ain't throwing no more fits. I, you look good, God of mine. I'm tired of looking like the devil and acting like Cain. I'm not throwing another fit. We, we sung us a song last night, My Mother's Cheer. Stay calm, be cool and be collective amen that was my mother's cheer be cool be calm be cool and be collective and so uh we know when we start feeling like that it's time to call a timeout.
We got to call a timeout. We got to go sit in a corner somewhere. And so the second evidence that we talked about was having angry reactions to unfairness. This is when we just start tripping because, number one, life is hard. And that's not, that's not no lie. Life is hard. I mean, it's some days where it just was a hard day at the shop I mean my goodness everything came at us the enemy came at us people came at us manifestation came at a great cost it's sometimes life is hard but we also have to understand that because of what we expect from life sometimes life seems unfair as well things happen and it's like why me you know I've been trying to do right I heard something a long time ago no good deed goes unpunished you know what I mean so it's like here I'm trying to do right that's what Paul said man when I know to do right you know here I am doing what I shouldn't do evil is present with me what in the world when I know not to do something I find myself doing it I'm trying to help myself and can't even do it so sometimes it's just that life is what it is but we can't allow life to get us in a position to where we allow it to control us amen and we've got to become offensive in our walk with God now we've got on the whole armor of God you don't leave the house without the armor of God but one of that pieces of the armor was the sword of the spirit which is the word of God and we've got to go forward offensively using the word of God applying the word of God to our own personal lives so that we can be victorious every day do you know it's God's plan for us to be victorious and fruitful every day Part of our prayer of repentance is when we realize we didn't have a victory or bear fruit in a day. Did y'all hear me? Lord, forgive me for not claiming and walking in your victory and not bearing some fruit today because God has made us a fruitful vine. We should be fruitful people. The fruit of the spirit is and so not just out of our own lives but somebody else's life should produce love and joy and peace because of us there ought to be some blessings we ought to just be laying blessings out just like uh when Ruth was walking in the field uh Boaz told him listen let's let a little fall out your basket so she ain't got to work hard so there should be some goodness just falling out our basket people that follow behind us people that watch us people we got on Facebook people we got on Twitter people we got in church family members people where we live people where we go to school they ought to just be able to pick up and glean off of our goodness because our lives supposed to be overflowing amen and so because of that they're able now to see the goodness of God coming out of your life they ain't even got to ask you a question they start snooping and following you around because they bless watching you amen they bless following you around and so that's how our lives should be that's how our lives should move and so we've got to think that way we've got to move that way and we've got to have that mentality we've got to put those things to work so we can't just allow the enemy to cause us to walk or to to operate in a state of nothingness where we're not fruitful and we're not producing because God has called us to be producers amen Amen. God has called us to produce something. There is something that should come out of our lives that brings hope to somebody else's life. So we can't really worry about what's unfair because sometimes the cost of your manifestation is great. But Jesus said that you've got to count up the cost. Don't be like a man that takes his team to war and you go with 10,000, you got to fight 20,000. Or you start a project, but you don't have enough money to finish it. That's in the Bible. You've got to count up the cost. There is some plan to this salvation. There's some plan to this redemption. And there's plan to our significance in the earth. It's going to cost you something. No cross, no crown amen no pain what no gain there's going to be a cost to everything that God does in and through our lives I told somebody the other day I don't mind being a doormat if somebody else is going to enter in if that's my job then I'll stretch myself out I'll be that bridge God I'll allow you to use me but I can't start complaining that people walking over me if I didn't already agreed to be the mat if I didn't already agreed to be the bridge what am I tripping on in order for them to get there they got to walk on top of you so there's going to be some people that's going to get into the kingdom get into kingdom uh, mindsets that are going to pay you no attention disrespect you they are going to not be grateful of what you've done in their lives but you can't worry about that because my reward don't come from man it comes from God I am seeking to please God and not man and I don't care what anybody says to me and that 
that's half the problem for all the people that's watching you spend too much time wanting people to appreciate you everybody likes a pat on the back but look at your neighbor and say but I ain't gonna need one I ain't gonna need one as long as I know God is pleased I'm satisfied talk about me dog me don't don't acknowledge me don't appreciate nothing I say hey that's okay because what you're not getting ready to do is take me out of the joy of the Lord that's what you're not getting ready to do because the joy of the Lord is my strength so you're not getting ready to steal my joy what you're not getting ready to do is disrupt my peace why because the peace that passes all understanding standing shall guard and keep my heart and my mind so that's what you're not getting ready to do you're not getting ready to disrupt my walk with God and my peace and my joy because the devil comes to steal kill and destroy what peace and joy what did David lose when they came to Ziklag two wives what did his wives name mean peace and joy ain't no way in the world I'm gonna try to live this Christian life and don't have my peace and my joy because God gave it to me he said and the world cannot take it away so there's no reason reason that we allow people to get us so frustrated that they disrupt our peace and our joy now that doesn't mean every now and then you can't help somebody uh, and allow them to understand what you're walking in and what you're getting ready to do and what they can't have from you but at the end of the day I still got my joy I still got my shout I still got my praise and ain't no way in the world I'm gonna ever be in a position where I'm too mad to worship yeah, but see, we got that going on in the church. People are so frustrated that they're too mad to worship. We, they're too mad to worship. They, they get so upset at people. They get so upset at things, and they try to figure out what's going on with people's lives and what's going on with this and what's going on with that, and people done disrupted them to the point that they can't get into the presence of God. Somebody say, that ain't me, though. That ain't me. And so we talked about uh, living these uh, lives that are hard, and we talked about these internal mechanisms that seem to turn us in a particular particular way and three things we talked about uh, that begin to happen uh, that that tell us that life is hard number one we said we have disappointed desires disappointed desires this is where God showed me and God ministered to me and said this is where you need to ask me what to ask me because you're asking me to bless something but you didn't even ask me if I was in that and now you mad because I ain't blessing it, but I, I never intended to bless that. That's not where I was at. That ain't had nothing to do with me. You should have asked me what to ask me. And see, and if you'd have done that, then I'd have gave you the desires of your heart. Then when you asked me to bless it, I'd have already been blessing it. Because remember, whatsoever thing you loosed on the earth is already loosed in heaven. So when you'd have said, go on and bless me, Lord, he'll say, don't worry about it. I'm already blessing it because it's mine. That's why Zechariah said, ask for rain while it's raining. Uh, while I'm blessing, ask me to bless you. While I'm healing, ask me to heal you. While I'm delivering, ask me to deliver you. Why? Because I'm already doing it and now you're going to see the manifestation we keep asking God to do stuff that he ain't in and we gotta quit doing that and then guess what we walk away mad we take it out on people but we mad at God yeah you can say amen because I done already repented for all them years where I tried to displace my anger on people and for real I was frustrated with the Holy Ghost Amen. Because I done listened to some wrong teaching. I done got on some wrong doctrine where I can name it, claim it, where I can start telling God what to do because I got power on earth and for God, he's still God. Your faith don't make him not God. You can't faith God into doing something that he don't want to do. Amen. You can't move him out of the realm of his providence because you got faith. I hear people say that, well, I got faith, honey. You got faith in the wrong thing, and you're getting ready to have your feelings hurt. And if you're not careful, you'll be to mess around let the devil give it to you. And then when he give it to you, it's coming with curses and persecution. It's going to come with a heavy price that you can't pay. You better quit trying to declare what God ain't in. You know, the children of Israel said, give us a king, give us a king, give us a king. He said, you don't want a king. You've got judges, you've got rulers, you've got people and prophets that listen to me. You don't want, we want a king, we want a king, we want a king. Okay, here comes Saul. The Bible says, and he was a heavy taskmaster. They ain't had nobody like that in the rest of their lives. Then they start hollering, Lord, kill him. Lord, help us. And then don't we do that? We ask and beg for a blessing. Then when it comes, we ask God to take care of it. God, you got to help me. No, no, no. You're going to work this one out. You're going to get this full lesson 
on why I told you you didn't want to fool with this thing right here. Amen. Number two, determined rebellion is what comes out of a hard life. Determined rebellion. It's where we try to get security from an unsecure world. It's where we start walking away from the word of God, walking away from the will of God, determined rebellion. So first is disappointed, desi disappointing desires, and now determined rebellion. And we've got to be careful because we start now trying to manufacture too many things in our own lives and call it God. Because now in my rebellion, I'm actually trying to impress people around me that God is blessing me and God ain't in it. Amen. We go buy a car in somebody else's name that we done lied about and done made up and used the other social security number and the other address and we done put down a bad check and done this and done that and then say the Lord did it. The Lord did it. I went to get a car. Somebody went to put it in their name. God didn't do it. I got to ride back. I said, you know what? My bad. I just brought you off into some ignorant stuff. Let me go up here and tell these people what I need and walk in here myself with my own stuff and see what God do. And then I drove away. Somebody say he drove away because God was in it. When God is in it, we don't have to pull no tricks. When you got to pull a trick, that ain't God. Tell your neighbor, God ain't, ain't no trick. God ain't no trick. So he, he, he's, he's going to bless. And sometimes we need to wait. Sometimes you've got to do it your own. And it's got to cost you more because God is doing something good in your life. We've got to be careful. Amen. And I, and I say it all the time. I know it helps. I know people bring the blessing and the tithe and, and bless the bishop and all that. But don't put nobody on your tax return that don't belong there. Stop that. Stop that mess. Stop that, because if they ever wanted to come get everybody, everybody going to jail. Only reason we ain't going to jail, they ain't got room yet. And you heard me say yet, because they selling them. You know, every time you get a million dollars, they ask you, do you want to buy jail? Ask every millionaire. As soon as you hit a million dollars liquid assets, first thing that comes to you is, do you want to buy a penitentiary? We will build it, give you the credit, and all you got to do is have the operating cost, which is normally $1 million for a year for about 50 inmates, and they want to pop them up all over the nation. You'll pay that thing off in 10 years, and then by the 20th year, you'll be done made about $70 million. They are looking, and you'll make a little money while you're paying it off, because they don't take 100%, they take 50. This thing is crazy. So we've got to be careful. They're trying to set us up. All right. And then what begins to happen? The third thing that comes is unfulfilled demands. This is where we become so angry with people. In order for us to have decent relationship, we start putting out ultimatums. In order for us to be friends, you got to do A, B, C and D. You got to live like this. I ain't tolerating this. This is the only way I'm going to operate. Rather than being open to the Holy Ghost and walking in love and peace and forgiveness. Amen. Because, see, the one thing that, that you got to understand is people can't run over top of you if you listening to God. If anything, they're abusing the grace of God, and we need to pray for their mercy. For God's mercy. They can't, uh, they can't run over top of you if you're listening to God. If you're doing what God tell you to do, and you're not doing what God tell you not to do, then whatever they think they're getting away with, they messing with God, not you. I remember when I first went to the penitentiary, God said, when I went to the federal penitentiary and the dorms were open, God said, do not lock your locker. Trust me. And I thought to myself, my locker full. I got Vienna sausages and everything in here, Jesus. I got stuff folk can't even buy. I got the good meat. What you saying? He said, do not. I went to my locker one time, and about 15 things was gone. So toothpaste, toothbrush, tuna fish. I was devastated. I went to the, I went to the commissary. I said, give me two locks. I was going to switch them up in the morning, have one lock, and in the evening have another lock. Came in, CO came, said, uh, you got a lock on your locker, open your locker. Open my locker. He named about five things that I had too much of, so I'm getting ready to go to the hole. 
So I'm getting ready to go down there to the hole. Something happened. They said, send him back up to the dorm. I go back up to the dorm. I get a letter saying, next time you got too much commissary, you're going to the hole. Right then, the Lord said, I told you, keep the lock off your locker. It wouldn't even have brought you no attention. So I took the lock back off my locker. Then guess what? When people started coming, going to commissary, they found out that often when new people came in, I would give them things. So guess what people started doing? bringing me food so now because my locker was unlocked folk was putting food in my locker rather than taking food out I opened my locker three things a toothpaste two extra toothbrushes all kind of so because they knew that as I was people were coming in part of our Christian cartel we would bless people with a few items so that they wasn't hurt till commissary and we would just bless them and tell them listen you don't even know who gave it to you hush your mouth we didn't give you nothing we don't owe nothing just move on and do what you got to do but know Jesus loves you it didn't matter if they came with a kufi on or whatever because God has a way. Sometimes we walk around and have such a demand, don't want to trust God, don't want to believe God, so worried about people abusing us, we miss our blessing. We miss what God is trying to do. Amen. And you know in the midst of folk, of us doing stuff, folk going to despitefully use you. That's what Matthew 5 says, pray for them that despitefully use you. Come on, bless them that curse you. Do good unto them that persecute you. That's the love of God. That's, that's me living without anger. That's me understanding how powerful God is. You can't, you can't offend a dead man. If my life is hid and dead in Christ, you can't offend me. You can't just hurt my feelings. I ain't devastated. I ain't going back to church. They done hurt me. Who? Who? Who hurt you? Based on how good God's been to you, you ain't been hurt, you've been tried. You ain't been hurt, you've been tried. And God wouldn't even try you if it wasn't something genuine in you because tried is by fire. Fire brings out the jewel in you. God is just trying to get the coating and the dross off of you so that the real you can shine. It takes fire. Somebody say fire. Boom, boom, boom. It takes fire in order for the jewel to come. Amen? But we trip out who they think they are. I don't know. But what difference do it make? Somebody said, man, man, I heard your church and it's just so full of love and, and everybody love you and it's just so wonderful and, and you preaching to them folk and everybody. I said, man, 50% of them people don't like me. What you mean? They come. Yeah, but they talking about me. They sitting in conversations about me. You can't sit in a conversation about me and like me. You can't say, oh, okay, I didn't hold it. You can't go back and forth and like me. If somebody says something about my brother, the first thing, oh, what do what you say? Do what? Do you know that's my brother? Conversation over, Jack. You're not going to go back and forth concerning me. You're not going to discuss my personal life with somebody that don't love me and you like me. That's not going to happen. So if I say, so half of them don't like me. But guess what? That doesn't matter my assignment is to preach to them and to help them get to destiny and to help them manifest and that's God's business so I can give a flip how they feel about me it's how they feel about God that matter and at the end of the day I just want God to say to me well done my good and faithful servant I don't give a flip about a hater I'm glad I got them because it'll keep trying me and it'll keep making me shine bring them on make everybody that come hate me it don't make me no different because guess what I paid for the mic uh, it's my microphone that's why I sign for the building sign for the mic sign for the speakers if you bless hallelujah but you ain't sign for nothing cause one thing can happen I can't get put out to church now everybody might be able to leave but I can't get put out I told them I had the biggest house on the west side I, I'll be sitting here in 30,000 square feet chilling like a villain I'll be looking good but God is a good God so we can't worry about it I can't get upstairs at 6 in the morning and pray and be like they don't need to hear this this ain't for them they don't deserve this no, I don't deserve to be able to say it. So if God tell it to me, I bet you it's coming out of my mouth. And I pray it bless you. I pray it bless you. And I pray it converts a devil. 
I pray it converts the devil. I ain't mad about the devil showing up. I ain't mad about him catching a ride with a few of the saints. Then let him catch a ride with a few of the saints. He might get converted up in here because the truth getting ready to come out. And it's going to make somebody free. Amen. And so I'm not going to put those demands on people that you've got to be a certain way in order to be my friend. In order for me to speak to you, you got to be a certain way. You got to have already changed for me to speak to you. Now, there's some things we might not be able to cut covenant in because the Bible says don't be unequally yoked. And he ain't just talking about marriage. He's talking about business and everything else. So there might be some stuff that I might not be able to cut covenant with you in. But I ain't getting ready to judge you about it. I just got to protect the anointing that God has given me. And if God tell me don't go in somewhere, then if I go in, then I'm putting the anointing uh, in jeopardy. And if I ain't got the anointing, I'm gone. How many of you know that you're not your anointing, but you can't live without it? Because the anointing, even though it's not just for you, it is also for you. That's the grace of God that's keeping us alive. So we can't, we can't let this life being unfair get us or being hard get us jacked up. But also we've got to understand that we understand that life is, is unfair. So then if we're not careful, we began, watch this, we began to manipulate and use anger. We don't just have it, we begin to use it as a tool because we know it's present. And we manipulate anger in our relationships. Watch this. The first way we use anger is for self-protection. To build up a wall. So if I can act mad, then I ain't got to deal with a situation. I just, I just let anger be my, be my wall. I let anger just be my, my personal shield of my heart. Because if folk think I'm mean and angry, they ain't going to approach me and I ain't going to have to deal with stuff. So I'm just going to act mad. You see somebody, and really you're vulnerable. You wish y'all you wish could work it out. You wish it was peace. But because you're vulnerable and scared of the rejection, then you just go on and put the grit on. So when you see them, they gritting at you, you gritting at them. So you don't have to have interaction. But we have to be careful. And if we're not careful, we don't do it overtly. We do it invertly. We just kind of avoid them. We give them the impression that we're still mad. So we avoid, we use avoidance. But see, if I've got the peace of God, I ain't got to avoid you. I've always told people when they leave the church, they say, yeah, I, where you been? Uh, 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 God told me. Well, why you didn't tell me? If God told you when you said it, I'd have heard it too. I, I love the Lord. You don't have to sneak away when it's God. You have to run out the back door when it's God. You can thank God for the time you've had, salute him for what you're getting ready to do, and walk with your head up and humble and walk right on out the door because it's the Lord. You done snuck somewhere and joined somewhere and hid and hiding when you see me at the gas station and pulling off when we had the light together and ran a red light trying to get away. Oh, God, is that bishop coming? Show we a turn, turn, just turn. I done seen people, and you know me, I'm goofy. I don't follow folk. I done seen folk I ain't seen. I be like, that's so-and-so. I done follow them. They done make right now. They know they, I'm behind them. They know that's me. I done follow them. I done follow them all the way to where to this light. I say, hey. Oh, hi, Bishop. So I just say something silly. See you in church Sunday. And they lie. Watch this. Oh, okay. No good and well. They ain't coming. Uh, we, we, we also use and listen and a lot of times we use anger as protection because we've got pain look the truth of the matter is we got hurt instead, instead of calling it hurt we call it anger because now, now, now it protects me and, and it don't make me look like I'm weak you know what I mean? But for real, you hurt my feelings. And I mean, I was hurt by it. It made me cry. It made me feel bad. I didn't know you felt like that. Or I didn't know we was going to fall out like that. And now I'm, I'm sad. But I don't want you to know I'm sad. Because now that's, that looks like weakness. It, you know, I don't want to look weak. I want to look strong. So now I'm, I'm angry. You know what I mean? I'll tear your head off. when really, you tore my heart up. And I just want to say that. I really, I really loved you. I really loved you. I really, I think well of you. I didn't know we had that problem. Can't we, can we work it out? But I'm afraid to say that because if they say no, now I'm really tore up. You done hurt me and rejected me now. So now I lash out with anger and almost hatred and malice. And we'll talk about those levels. And we got to be careful. And we'll snap at people for no reason. We'll talk rough to people. 
You know, I always say, why y'all talk so rough to one another? Why y'all can't be sweet? What is the problem? What are you mad about? Just talk sweet to one another. For what are you, what are you getting ready to get accomplished? Y'all ain't, if y'all ain't getting ready to box, just say I love you. You know what I mean? And all that, knock the, knock the stick off my shoulder. What is that? I'm just going to punch him. If I want to rock, let's rock. I ain't going to cross no line, knock no stick off. If you come outside, what am I going to wait outside for? We're going to get on these pews and get down. It ain't no less sanctified to fight in the church than fight in the parking lot. What difference do it make? You come outside, I got something to say to you. I remember being at the old church. I, I said, uh-uh, say it to her in here. It ain't no more sanctified to go outside. We're going to take this outside so I can be holy. No, you ignorant inside and outside. What is it that y'all getting ready to fight about and y'all just came out of worship? It's anger. But a lot of times, anger ain't anger. We call it anger so we can use it, but it's pain. It's hurt. Amen. And so the other reason we use it, one is self-protection. The other one is deflection. I use my anger to blame other people for my shortcomings. I don't, I, don't want the, I don't want to have to go through the process of change. See, so I blame other people. But here's the problem. When you blame other people, you never grow. Because the definition for growth is sustained change. Sustained change. Not fake changing. Not pseudo changing. Not temporary change, but sustained change is growth. If this change can't remain and you can't add to it, it ain't growth. You look at your natural body. People have grown up when there have been a sustained change. He ain't four foot three no more. He four foot seven. You've grown. Why? Because it's a sustained change. It ain't going to reduce again. He's not going to lose four inches. These four inches are going to be sustained. That's growth. We got too many areas in our lives where we only good at it for a week. We only good at it for a month. It's called willpower. We do the best we can on our own, and then the truth of the lack of grace shows up. And we can't live in that chain. That don't mean we don't make mistakes. I'm talking about the fact that it just, it just goes away. That's why Jesus said, come on, you know a tree by the fruit that it bear. Because I might slip and do something that I used to do, but I'm going to repent. Because I done caught it. But it's when I don't want to repent. It's when I don't act like I need to give somebody an apology. It's when I act like I wasn't wrong. That's when we tripping. When you calling wrong normal, there's a problem. Remember, we talked about that years ago when you, when you ride and need a wheel alignment and you're too cheap to go get one. And so you adjust your life to leaning and now leaning becomes normal. Your stern wheel ain't at 10 and 2. Come on, it's at 11 and 5. And you got to drive straight like this because we don't have what it costs to take care of it. That's the same thing in the spirit. We start living out of alignment and then we call it normal and got an issue when somebody else address it. Amen. You know how I many texts and emails I get when somebody say, you know, I appreciate it. If you got something to say to me, you can say it to me directly. You ain't got to say it over the pulpit. I said, well, praise the Lord. If the shoe fit, take it off and find the right size shoe. I'm glad it busts you upside the head, but you got to know I didn't wake up this morning with you on my mind. As crazy as my mind is, you wasn't on it. <laughs> it wasn't you. So we've got to be careful. So deflection, anger, deflection just wants to blame everybody. And if we're not careful, we've done it. We've done it. This wife of mine, this husband of mine, these kids of mine, this mom of mine, this person of mine, this friend of mine, this, this maid of mine, this roommate of mine. If, we, if, we, if we're not careful, we done it. We dismiss stuff being us. You know, we displace it. We put it on other people. If I didn't have all them in my life, I'd be all right. You ought to be all right now. 
I could flow if this wasn't around. Somebody told me the other day, you know, if it wasn't for this and that, I'd have been great. You should have been great without this or that. It would have been your greatness to help change this or that. You just wasn't great. And face it, it don't mean that other people haven't been wrong, but you got something to do with it too. Because if I was that anointed, if I was that right, remember, perfect order exposes disorder and perfect light dispels darkness. So if we're perfect, ain't going to be no whole bunch of disorder around us because it can't stay in. If we're perfect light, darkness can't show up. It's because we got a couple bubs out too. Amen. And so we just got to be careful. Somebody told me the other day, they said, Bishop, you got a bub out in, in, in your chandelier. I said, no, I don't. And they said, yes, you do. And I flicked the light on. I said, see, ain't no bub out. They said, walk to the other side. And I said, well, daggone. I've been preaching that all this time and didn't even realize how true it was. The daggone bub was out, but it looked on from this perception. And I found out from an electrician that when you got bubs out, if it's made for four bubs and you got a bub out, you're making the other three work too hard. And you're shortening the life of the electricity current in that thing. Because you're making them work too hard. It's pulling on the wattage unevenly. And I thought to myself, good God Almighty, how many of us are sitting in the church with our bulb out, but it looked like we own because people are looking at it from the wrong perception. They're looking through lit bulbs and don't see that we out. Amen. We need to take a better look at our own lives and quit blaming everybody else and realize we the out. So look at your neighbor and say, I might be the bulb that's out. I might be the bulb that's out. That's the problem around here. It's dark because I'm the bulb that's out. Shucks. And I'm blaming it on somebody else because when I look, I get a reflection of their light thinking it's mine. And so the other thing that we use this anger for is distance. I use anger to keep distance. <clears throat> and why do people use anger to keep distance? Well, you know, when I saw this stuff, I had to go back to my clinical psychology stuff for pastoral counseling and I had to go back and look at sociology stuff and I, I said distance why in the world would the Lord tell me distance what is this so I go back and I look and I look up some stuff and it's because people like to look angry or allow anger to be used to keep distance because they never want their weaknesses exposed I don't want to know people where I'm not strong at especially if this community seems to be strong in what I'm weak in not realizing that God connected you to that so that you can grow. You let the devil trick you that you're going to be carry and everybody going to laugh at you. I don't know. I need I'd either go see the movie or just get delivered. Ain't that right? I say it every day. They're all going to laugh at you. They're all going to laugh at you. And so we got to be careful. But we, we get that. And we got to be careful that we don't allow ourselves to use anger to displace or bring distance because we are ashamed of our weaknesses. But that's why every joint works together. Every joint supply it. That's why it's important to have fellowship. That's why you can't do Christianity as a maverick. That's why we need one another. Now, I'm, I'm going if you go or not. But the truth of the matter is it's better if we go together. I need you, but I don't need you. If we could all have the right mindset, God has fit us together. If you just going to be against me, God going to find me somebody else. But I'm not going to lack. He said, I've never seen his children lack any, what, good thing. And that's what, but we've got to put ourselves in a position that we want to hear God, that we want to be in a position where God is blessing us, and we're not afraid uh, of of what God wants to do in our lives. So that's why we use anger. Let me, let me tell you something else we do. We mishandle anger. We mishandle our anger. How do we mishandle our anger? The first one is called repressions. We become repressive. We're upset and we are 
vile in our character because life isn't working out on our terms. And we've been like that. It's been like, you know, we've had some areas and some times where it's been our way or no way. Where it's got to go down this way or don't include me, don't ask me for my help. Upset because it didn't work out for me, so now I'm going to put some strong, stringent stuff on you. Still frustrated. The second way we mishandle anger uh, is we have shallow confessions. Where we reconcile just for the sake of being cool, but we really didn't get to the, the bottom of the matter. And we still walk away with an issue. But we say, I'm all right. And then if we're really not careful, we become volcanic. This is where we erupt. This is where we just go off. How many of you just done ever went off? Just be honest. You just went off. You, even if you didn't raise your voice, you cussed. You said something crazy to somebody. You just mean. Anybody ever said you, you mean? Lord have mercy. You just got to stop that. You know? You just lost it for a minute. And even after you done went off, you thought to yourself, did I just go off like that? Did I go off like that? I'm telling you. And this is how you know when you went off. And I said it a couple of weeks. This is how you know when you done went off and went too far. When they gone and you still talking. That's when you know you done lost your mind. They gone. And I don't know who they think. I don't know. And you talking and going off and still cussing. And then you say something back to yourself like, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's when you done lost your whole mind and done, done went volcanic. That's when you got, you got lava of anger rolling down your life. You still cuss. You done drove off. You done left. You done hung up the phone. And you still going off on this joker like they can hear you. And then you say stuff like now, like they heard you. How you like that? I don't know who you think you messing with. It's like, who you talking to? You done lost your mind. But it's, it's, where, it's where we allow anger to cause us to lose discernment and discretion. We completely lose discernment and discretion. We start living on the edge. And if you're not careful of having multiple volcanic reactions, you'll end up living like that. A time bomb. Come on, how many times have I preached it? We got to be careful because you don't know who's sitting next to you. It's just, it's just ticking. Sometimes you got to listen in the spirit when you sit next to somebody in church. You let me move. Let me let me find. Either my praise got to be on time. I got to worship for real, or I'm sitting next to you know the next. This is this. Am I am I at the church or the mosque? What's getting ready? This joker getting ready to self explode in the name of God. And how many times have we done that? Are we seen people? cuss folk out in Jesus name don't went off and use scripture cuss folk out and say touch not my anointing and do my prop cuss you straight out and say no weapon formed against me shall prosper I remember I heard somebody cuss somebody out before and then they said I'm the head not the tail I said you sound like the tail though you sound you sounded like the tail right now if I could just use uh, the correct language you got donkey-ish uh, attributes right now you acting like <laughs> yeah the, the thing that Abraham left at the bottom of the mountain when he went to worship that's what you're acting like thing that Jesus rode in on <laughs> that's what you're acting like right now and uh, but we lose it and, and and when we lose discernment and discretion we lose sight 
of what we're wrestling. Remember, it's not flesh and blood. My wrestle is really not people. It's the spirit that has taken over them. It's not really people. It's a spirit. Now, I have to admit there are certain people, certain groups of people. People fit in certain categories because the spirit is ruling their life. But it's still not the people. It's the spirit. Because the person can still be delivered. Amen. You've heard me say it before. Sometime I preach to either get you to leave or get you to change. Either your life going to line up and you're going to roll with this family or you're going to eventually have to go because it's going to be too uncomfortable because we ain't changing. We sticking with the word of God. Come hell or high water. With all our slip, dips, flips, and trips, we still sticking with, we're going to repent and stick with the word of God. We're not getting ready to change what we believe to let you fit in. That's not going to happen. And so we still, we've got standards and values and principles that we're going to live by. So we've got to be careful not to let our anger cause us to compromise in those areas. But at the same time, we've got to have enough discernment to realize I don't have to come against this person. Rebuke that spirit. You know, the next time somebody go off on you, you ain't even got to say it out loud. Just say, you know what, I rebuke that spirit with a smile in the name of Jesus. Girl, come here. Come here. What's wrong? You all right? And if they go off and don't want to hug you, just amen. Amen. That spirit ain't going to get me today. Let me go into worship. Amen. Keep it what? Moving. You know, it, we, you don't have time to get caught up into that. You don't have time to let that stuff off on you. Sometimes you have to spiritually wash your hands after you've dealt with some people. Even in calm conversation, when you leave them, you got the spirit to watch. You know what, Lord? I seen that spirit in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Let me go in here and worship. You know, we go to the prison, and I, you know, me being an inmate, I understood it. I understood it well. And we used to pray for Pastor Abner and them, but then I go in and we laid hands. It was about three, four hundred women in that in that prison the other day. And we laid hands on so many of them and prayed and all those spirits. And the apostle was right. Before we left, he said, come on, y'all, let's just pray and wash our hands. Not of the women, but of the spirit. Because we laid hands and folk got delivered. They fell out. They shouted. They screamed. They ran. They cried. So we know that that spirit was released from them. But what is a demonic spirit? It is a disembodied spirit looking for a body to vent its lust. So when it got delivered from them, it's looking for somebody who got an open opening that it can attach to and ride and we didn't want to bring that mess back to the house amen and so you got to wash down you got to cleanse you got that's why it's important for us to stay prayerful if we're doing real work in ministry you got to stay prayerful because you come across some people I, I see people all the time man I talk to them man where you been oh man just doing what I do I say yeah man I know it's hard man I heard you preach yeah I'm doing it. we had that conversation I get in the car I say Lord bless them now watch me you know why because what we don't want to admit is some of their spirits are familiar it's the spirit that used to handle you it's the spirit that used to take over you it's the spirit that used to run you so you got to ask God to block you from familiar spirits I ain't judging them I know a man game recognized game you know you try the spirit by the spirit I know that thing right there Lord in the name of Jesus protect me because I know what it's like if I get caught back up under that thing it's hell to pay for the city if I'm back on the block I don't need that thing. Amen. And so we've got to be careful because volcanic anger will cause us to lose our discernment and our discretion. We won't even know how to deal with plain situations. You look what James says. A double-minded man is in, unstable in what? All of his ways. So I can't shout on Sunday and I'm mad as hell on Monday at everybody. Now I'm going to let Tuesday through Saturday. I'm going to be jacked up. I'm going to make all kind of bad decisions. We got stuff we got to do. We got things God is literally putting in our hands. We've got to make the right decisions. We've got to include the right people. We've got to smile and pray at the right time. We, can't, we cannot afford to walk around, listen, with an attitude. 
Mad at what? Some of the stuff we in is our fault anyway. How many of you know you can complain a curse into your life? The Bible tells us too many times, quit murmuring and complaining. Your first will of God is to be thankful in and for everything. This is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Why do we act so unthankful, ungrateful? Oh, my life is just, I'm so sick. What? You got a blessed life because I can walk you down the street. Mm -hmm. I can find somebody with your degree, with your job title, with, I mean, with your job uh, uh, qualifications. I can find somebody that was smarter than you in high school. I can find somebody look better than you. I can find somebody that's wiser than you now, and they doing dirt ball bad and wish they had your hand. The one you complaining about. Ace high is good when ain't nobody got a pair. All I got is an ace. I ain't got no pair. Don't nobody else got a pair. They wish they had your ace. How many times I used to play poker and I'd throw my hand in five cards. I'd throw my hand in with two threes. I'd throw it in. And shoot, I ain't got but two threes. And they ain't got no job. But I, I despise, I despise my double trades. I despise them because I'm thinking it ain't high enough. So I throw it in, but ain't nobody else got a pair. Hey Amen. Tell somebody, just work with your hand. Just work with your hand. If that's what God deals you, then work with it. And if it seems to be less than, then it's something God's saying about you. You can work with less where other people need more. Hey Amen. They need that kind of help. Somebody asked me the other day, well, you don't act like you pay us no attention. You've been around here too long. You don't need that much attention. What's wrong with you? You know what we need to do. I should be able to say, hi, girl. Hi, man. What's up, dog? And keep on moving. I ain't got to hug you and hold you all day. You know where the bathroom is. I ain't got to show you around there. Well, I don't know the last time I came into the green room and talked to you. The last time you was a baby. That's the last time you came. You was a baby when you came. I said, come talk to me in the green room. You was a baby. You a big girl now. I can holler at you in, on the run. I can give you a scripture and you good. You'll be able to handle that. Amen. And so we got to get to that place. You know, everybody want to be picked up. I can't pick everybody up. Amen. One of the little kids said that the other day, Bishop, you don't pick me up no more. I said, I know you 5'2". I ain't but 5'8", but 5'9". Where, where am I going to pick you up to? Lord, have mercy. You's a, you's a giant. I'm not going to pick you up. I picked Deanna up. And in about six years, I ain't picking her. I used to pick her mama up. I ain't picking her mama up no more. Now I picked the baby up. And we've got to learn, but I'm going to tell you something. Anger will not let you mature. It's worse than crack. They told me when I went to rehab that when you finally get off of cocaine and you finally leave it alone, that's how old you're going to be. When you started, that's how old you go back to. So if you've been getting high since you were 17, when you finally get delivered, you're going to have a 17-year-old mentality. And you're going to have to grow expeditiously. Same thing with anger. You live with an angry life. When you finally get delivered from anger, your whole mentality got to go back to where you picked it up at. And it's got to now, now you got to grow up, tell somebody, but I got to grow up fast. I got to grow up fast. Because just because I'm acting 17, I'm still going to get treated 45. Ain't nobody get ready to slow the world down because I didn't develop. Amen. And so we've got we've to be careful. We've got to be careful about this life is hard thing. We've got to be careful about the life is unfair. We've got to be careful of how we use it and how we mishandle anger. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this hour. We thank you for this time, God. Continue to strengthen us and guide us. Continue to grow us, God. Mature us in your word. Help to get rid 
of this anger God and this distrust that we have developed because things didn't go our way people disappointed us and situations of our own selfishness were unfulfilled help us God to realize that our times are in your hand and that we can trust you with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding but in all our ways if we acknowledge you you shall direct our paths help us God to just become the people that you have preordained and predestined for us to be that God we might be used as vessels meet for your use to bring someone else into the kingdom to give light to somebody else to call somebody else to call upon your name and receive the good news and the glorious goodness of your life and your spirit help us now to walk with a kingdom mindset and with kingdom intention kingdom power kingdom love kingdom service God that we might live this life God that blesses and pleases you and that causes others to just bust in to the kingdom now God give us strength against things that are hard and unfair give us strength through the cost that we have for manifestation give us fortitude God give us a mindset give us discernment and discretion against the things that try to confuse us and most of all give us victory over everything the enemy tries to bring against us and we'll be careful to praise you while we're in it praise you while we're going through it praise you while we're under it because we know your praise is worthy and we can praise you in advance we love you we honor you and we bless you sir in Jesus name amen all right we love y'all see y'all next week